so basically Rogue put on like a record breaker attempt so they can do the Denny Stones or there's the Thor's Hammer Hold. Tom and I are going to do the Thor's Hammer Hold. It's just as a little bit of fun. Mitch is doing the Denny Hold. I think the hold record is 49 or 39 seconds, I forget. Big Laws is here, he's going to do it as well. I just want to go home, get on the plane and go home, man. Um, yeah, we'll get there. I want sweets. What's happening guys? So we are finally back from the Rogue Invitational. It took us a, a couple of days to get home. Flights cancelled, bags lost. Just the usual journey for both Tom and myself. So we thought we'd give a wee breakdown of our thoughts. Obviously there's a lot of back and forth conversations going on about the Rogue Invitational. They should have done this, they should have done that, blah, blah, blah. But obviously both Tom and myself were competing. Um, so yeah, we thought we'd just go through it, maybe event by event. Um, no, we got there on the Wednesday, Thursday, pouring with rain. It was one of the heaviest rains I've ever seen. It was horrendous. Bad, 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 bad. Really bad. Even the bus was leaking on the way to the venue, so not a really good sign, not a good start. So there was some contingency plans put in place by Rogue, as we had to be, you know, because it was so wet and really not that safe for us to be competing. Um, so we got there. First day was up on the Friday. First event was the deadlift. Um, and I, I, our deadlift, our deadlifts have been going quite well, training wise. I'm hitting 400 pretty comfortably. You're smashing out reps at 400. Um, but for me personally, what I noticed that when I went up to lift it, it was a completely different setup than I thought. You know, the bar was almost free. There was no weight on the bar until you picked it up, and you couldn't be explosive when you pulled. So you had to be kind of more controlled aggression. I think that's when. You know, you see someone like Evan Poole, he's like really aggressive off the floor and that kind of threw him off. So it, it kind of, I don't know about you, you, but for me, it kind of caught me out in that sense. You really had to grind it out. I don't know if you thought the yeah, same. Yeah, same. I mean, it wasn't really, it's not really a deadlift. I mean, I think 18 inch deadlifts are really easier, much easier in the gym, but trying it like that with the weight behind, weight below you. You know, it's mistakes as well. We should have probably watched videos of people doing it in the competition because, you know, no one, we, we just thought it was a normal 18 deadlift and you pull it and the weight was below you. We didn't know the bar was going to wobble, so 
Yeah, I mean, it was a hard pull. Was, and I think it was about 444, 50 kilogram as well, because it was a heavy, heavy deadlift. And you can see everybody got lower than they did last year as well. So it was a very heavy, heavy deadlift to start off. But yeah, it was good. I mean, it's just one of them things. Um, yeah, I think it would have been, I mean, you know, we're all trying to make things spectacle, but even a fixed deadlift bar would have still be the same because you know, I think everybody wants to, you know, fight out for number one. And I think if it was a fixed deadlift bar, but that exact same setup, it would have been much more competitive. So yeah, I don't think you would need the wobbly bar because I think that can cause a lot of injuries. I think Tom Evans went over the bars mm. as well. So yeah, I think it was good, but I just don't think the wobbly bar was is necessary for, especially for lifting weights like that and to the extreme we go to. I don't think it's far away from being like a really good event. It's, it's almost there. Uh, everything's perfect. I just think now, like when I went down to even, like before we warmed up, I was like, well, the bar moves. And that's when, uh, for me, it was just, you know, because if you, with the bar would move after your first trip, it could go, one bit could be left, one could be right. And, you know, you could tear something easier. You could, I mean, you could injure yourself much easier with a fixed bar. At least you know that bar's in the same spot all the time. And it's still a massive spectacle as well. I think mm. when, you, when you're going up the steps and you're on top of that podium, everybody wants to see you pull as much, much uh, as many reps as you can. So, yeah. yeah, no, it was good. I mean, a big shout out to us was Trey and Bobby. They, they smashed it out. They looked really good, yeah. both getting eight reps. So it was class, really good. Um, and then, you know, on the on the Friday, the rain was still threatening. So they made the decision to put the iron bull sled pool um, under the, the can canopy of, of the stadium, whatever. So that's, that's I think that had to be made, that decision, because you couldn't pull it. Um, obviously, there was a bit of controversy, people talking about the iron bull and stuff like that. Um, and it was really difficult, but I mean, what can you say to that? It's it's a it was a hellish event. Um, it was almost you could break the momentum for maybe twenty feet or so, or ten, fifteen feet, and then it was a two-footed start each time, wasn't it? Like that's how I kind of attacked it. Um, Matea, she was up first. He smashed it. He's probably the best puller there. Um, it was just that unfortunate kind of set of events that made it. A little bit more, I don't know, tricky, difficult. Right, the wet and humid didn't help you, but I think you know if Kulikovsky's <laughs> pulling at that and, and struggling, you, you know it's you know it's heavy, and that's when I kind of knew in my head after I seen him do it, I was like, this is going to be hard. And obviously, when Brian Shaw and everyone was testing it as well, they I don't think any of them uh, finished it either. So that's when you know it's like, you know, I think a lot of people are saying that you can use your body weight, but in this you can't use your body weight. There's no body weight, you can't do it like a normal trap pull, it's literally just, like you just have to look like you're drunk, you just have to pull, stop, pull, stop, pull, stop, pull, stop. Um, but hopefully, I mean, if it, you know, I mean, I think this was, this event, you know, I think hopefully next year we can, it can be seen again, but maybe a bit lighter or, you know, take away the tracks or something and just do a, do like a bull sled on, on the grass, because you can still make a really cool apparatus like that. But just pull it on the grass, and I think also what shot, uh, what, you know, threw a lot of people off is we added a rope in at the end because I think everybody was like, when that rope came in, they were like, this is going to be heavy then because there was a bear crawl. Um, you know, we all kind of trained for bear crawl. We didn't really train for rope, and also having trap pull and bear crawls are two different things. You have to train for a trap pull. You have to train having a rope in your hand. So it's it's not just as easy to just get down low. But where with bear crawl, everyone's been training to get into that kind of rugby stance and all that and I mean look what happened to Trey Mitchell I think that's when uh, we kind of knew right this that's the kind of thing that happened because Trey yeah that Achilles injury was very scary for myself and then for Bobby to go up next I would have just been like I'm not doing that because that was very scary but yeah it was a cool event spectacle wise but I think it would have been again more competitive if if it worked but again that was the weather you know the humidity maybe we were getting stuck and stuff but we didn't really know what happened to it. It was just, it started off easy, then all of a sudden, bang, and you just had to wiggle it. You couldn't keep that momentum going. You tried to, but you just, it's just like you're uh, walking on the spot. Mm. Yeah, it was a tough one. It was, And then after that, then the rain came back in um, on the on the Friday, Friday night. Yeah. And then it was decided to not do any more events. So we only did the two events on the, the Friday. Um, and then Rogue, I think I had a meeting on the evening of Friday night, and then when we woke up, we got like uh, we get like information emailed whatever to us, and then it, there was a decision made to remove the axle clean and press, remove the fingers fingers, 
change it to log for reps, um, the sled pull is a sled pull, and the, the dual was slightly changed as well. So this was like a, a discussion that they, the guys have had at Rogue um, because of the weather, and it was pretty horrendous on the, the Saturday, you know, it was some, some big downpours, and I think if we did, for example, a Fingal's finger in the rain, it wouldn't have been very safe. Um, it's just one of those things, you know, that the guys have to make a decision, and we've had it at World Strongest Man before they've made changes to the events dependent on weather, um, and you've just got to go with it as an athlete. We can't, we're kind of at their, their calling, basically, aren't we? We can't really do anything, but on the, the, the Saturday morning we got there early, we had the, the roller coaster, the sled pool, um, and, and for me, my, my forearms were were gone um, from the, the sled pool the day before. So when I was pulling, even in warm-ups, I could feel my, my forearms cramping up, so I tried to loosen them off. Um, and yeah, it was a bit disappointing for me not completing that. I think it would have been a decent time if I completed it, but just forearms um, just completely cramped up, got some work done. Um, but it was a great event for you. You smashed it. Really good kind of big long pulls you were doing. It was nice. Yeah, long pulls. I think um, I was just looking at other people doing it and I think the advantage I've got is I've got, I, I'm a, got longer limbs. So like one pull of me, mine's maybe two or three of other people. So I was just using the long pulls and it shocked me that it was lighter than what I've been doing in training, which was very weird and like training and stuff. I was struggling and, uh, but I think it was just, yeah, it was much lighter than I thought, which is good to come second to Kulikoski. And that was a shock in my eyes because I thought, you know, there's a lot of people that had done this last year and it was the same weight. I thought maybe I would have came fifth or sixth in that event. So, yeah, I was happy. I was happy enough with how I performed with that. Um, but, yeah, it was good. And it stayed dry for that event as well, which was good. So mm. that was a... Up know, until Mitch went out. Up, yeah, and Mitch up until... It started to rain then when Mitch went out. So um, they could have rushed it a lot. Of, not rushed it, but, like... The, the guy says, right, Mitch, whenever you're ready, go. Um, and fair play to Mitch. Mitch smashed it as well. He did a, a really good pull. Um, so, yeah, it was quite fortunate. And then after that, that was, for me, that was a highlight of the day, the next event, the log press. That was, uh, Maxime was up first. He put out a, Maxime, I don't even remember, he ripped off his belt and stuff for his last rep, got the, the rep up. And then I think I was up next. I got eight reps which was, you know, I was pretty happy with. Um, you were like, gene me up a wee bit and, and kind of so get me a marker, give me a marker, so. But then, again, my forearms, on the, when I picked up the ninth rep, I couldn't pick it up because my forearms, I thought I tore the inside of my forearm, but it was just the cramp again, because obviously when you pick it up, you're squeezing your forearms. Um, but it was, it was good, and then, obviously, you went up and banged out 10 reps like it was a feather. I, need, I think the, 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 the kind of hardest thing about this when, you've, you know, when you wake up on a Saturday and you fear that there's only three events, um, you know, I understand what we'll do changing events, but like when you're, when you're in that pressure, you know, obviously you're chasing a leader, so you have to literally not make mistakes, you literally have to come top three in, the, in those three events or you're not going to win. You know, Mitchell was five points in the lead after the first day. So taking out an event, you lose automatically 10 points. So I had to kind of play good in the arm over arm and then had to win Log and had to win the, you know, the last event. And Log, I, I was confident in Log. Obviously, I'd done it just the week before in Glasgow. Um, so I kind of knew it wasn't going to be as taxing as that. So on fingers, I didn't really, I wasn't too worried about that. But I was just kind of pumped up for it and, yeah, smashed out 10 reps and then... Yeah, a lot of people tied on eight, and then Mitchell did did nine. So it was a, uh, it was it was it was good, but it was uh, <laughs> I wanted the results to be a bit different that way. But um, yeah, I was happy enough, and then obviously on to the last event, which was the duel. And I think this is one that I really think three rounds should have stayed in um, in my eyes because, like, I get the weather and stuff. But when we did this event, there was no rain at all, and also the CrossFit people had done it the same kind of time. And I really think it would have changed a lot of things. Um, you know, when you do one round of loading, it's, you know, it's anyone's game, but when you mix it up with three or four rounds, that's when then fatigue can kick in. And, you know, the loading was just, we, we were just basically running to it and loading it into like, loading three bags, 160, 150, 160, 170, like a meter. So, and I think to, to win, to, to do one round of that, it's, you can't really tell too much because like I said, it could be one mistake or, you know, whatever. If you make a mistake in the first round, yeah, you can go again, you can go again. 
So I really think it would have been more competitive, maybe better for the crowd, I think, and better for the athletes to do three rounds. That's the only kind of thing that I'm... Especially because we took an event out. When we took the event out and I seen Jewel, I thought, oh, it's still the Jewel. But then when they said no brackets, that was just for myself. Like I thought maybe, all right, they're going to do a big 10-metre loading race or 15-metre loading race, and it's going to be just one-off big loading race, which I was looking forward to. But, yeah, it was just... For me, it was just one of those things. I mean, I, after the log, I knew I couldn't really catch Mitchell because, like, when when you're doing this one on loading, I knew that Mitchell was really, really good at loading. We had a good battle in Glasgow the week before, and I knew he's not going to finish third or fourth place, especially with a, like this one-round thing. He's going to finish in the top two, and that's kind of what happened. So, yeah, it's, it was really good. I mean, you had a good show as well, up to your last sandbag. I think um, you were doing, you know, really mm -hmm. fast. And I think, again, that's it, you know, like, if... Luke would have went through into the second round if it were was a second round. So it's just, I think the duel could have maybe been a bit better. Or if no duel, definitely do one more event. Because I think for ourselves and I think for the fans that paid the money and everything, I think six events would have been cool to do. Even if they just made a, a mystery event out like they do in CrossFit, they came to us and go, right, your sixth event is going to be be this. It's all out. Whoever wins it, you know, wins it. And that would have been quite cool to see. So having that five events was just a bit more pressure on you on the second day to try and you know, catch the leaders or catch podium or try and make yourself fourth or fifth place, so. Mm, you know, I, I agree, it was, a, it was a bit of a tough one. It was kind of, um, I guess, Rogue were kind of had their hands tied at the end of the day, but it was still a bit kind of anticlimactic. You know, you want it to be like a spectacle, the last event, and um, it could have been, it could have been a real, really good event, but I think just with the time um, and the kind of crossover in between CrossFit and stuff, it, it's just one of those things, but... Um, I think you definitely had the momentum going into the last, you know, that, that last day, you had that momentum about you and it was class to see, it was really good and um, well, it's one of those things, finishing second again at Rome is not, a, yeah, it's good. It's not too bad. Yeah, I said, you know, you can't, you can't do the weather, you can't say the events, you know, like, we knew that we had it, but the only thing I was a bit shocked about was the, the event that got taken away, you mm. know, because before we went, obviously before, we, after the final day, we got told, right, we're doing four events on the Saturday and obviously when you sleep on that, and you have four events in your head and you wake up to then having an email saying we're only doing three events. It, you know, it can throw, it might not throw myself or Luke off, but it can throw athletes off. Mm. And for us, we want to have every athlete 100% going into it with their mindset that like, they can they can compete. And when you've trained like Axel, when you've trained sitting and then it throws you into like a log or sitting, for example. Um, you know, Kilikoski, I think, may have been a bit more competitive as well if uh, Axel and stuff was in because his, obviously... <laughs> He's not training much long, but yeah, it is what it is. Trey would have, if Trey was in for the whole match as well, I think he was going to be up there with the podium. But it's one of them things that's, you know, Road did what they could. And uh, I think it's hard as well when you have CrossFit and Strongman, especially in weather demands, uh, rain, because CrossFit, there's like, what, 30 people competing. Mm -hmm. And if it, weather, if it weather gets delayed for them, then you know, it's a lot more athletes to get through. So mm -hmm. then obviously they've got a tight schedule for the Strongman to go, right, we have to cap it at 6 p.m. because this is when we get told to go off. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, apart from that, it was really good. That was our second rogue. Um, first one was very sunny, this one was very wet, so mm. <laughs> next year might be uh, a bit of both, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, it was very, very good to be part of again. Um, we're back home. That is basically all the competitions done for the year now, except from we're going to the team championships, which will be a bit of fun with Eddie Hall and Martins and seeing a few old and new faces. And then we're just going to chill out and get ready for 2024. It's going to be a big season, 2024. We'll do a little update, I suppose, once we know what we're doing in the next few weeks. Um, and we've got a few big collabs coming up this month as well, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be good fun. We're away tomorrow for one of my favourite people in the world, but we'll release that as and when. Probably put up some stuff on Instagram, whatever. But yeah, that's our review of Rogue. Next up, as Thomas says, is the team show for Giants Live. It's going to be really good, really excited for that. UK versus the USA. It's no competition, really. Yeah. Sorry, USA. Just stay at home. It's like British Airways versus American Airways. British Airways wins all the time. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, America. You're going down. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe, smile, and stay spicy. And please don't ever stop ringing that little bell. Ding-a-ling! -ling 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 -ling.